Howdy DIYers, today's mission, let's try and build a gaming PC for under a hundred bucks. Let's go! So I was just out skating and I found this case on the road next to the bin on the bin day. Unbelievable, it's a nice gaming case, it was just filthy. So I spent a good hour cleaning the heck out of it. I managed to get it mint, like almost new. Unbelievable find and it's a good start for our build. Dishwashing liquid, sponge, and some elbow grease. It is so much better. Let it dry in the sun. Time to dig into the donor PCs. I want to get all the usable parts I can from this pre-built HP. All, all I'm really going to use is the CPU, maybe the hard drive and the RAM. We'll just pull it all apart and then put them into anti-static bags and then use what we need. All right, here we go. First bit of money spent, donor PC number two, 35 euros. All the stripping, I could be a qualified stripper. So the main parts I got out of this PC were the power supply, 380 watt, remember to flick your switch down, a graphics card, a one gigabyte DDR2 GT220, and a heat sink but it turned out the heat sink was flogged so never mind but what i plan on doing is with all the leftover parts after the series is finished i'll build another computer to recuperate some costs donor pc number three ssd edition so i got this 120 gig ssd about seven years ago in new zealand for a tenner 50 euros for a Z series motherboard. What a bargain. Now we're ready for assembly. First step, we're going to put on the back plate. Hopefully, if you've bought a secondhand motherboard, it came with a back plate. They just pop on in. Pop it like it's hot. Why would you want to go with a high end motherboard when we're trying to do a cheap build like this? Well, I'll show you at the end of the video when we overclock our locked chip easy with this beast. I'm getting hooked on something, yep. Yeah. There we go. Okay, so now we need our motherboard screws. Not sure if you can see that on camera, but see there's a coarse thread and a fine thread. You need to check your motherboard stands to know what you need. Can't stand it when you can't get a screw in. Also make sure all your motherboard stands are in the right place. You don't want to be missing one or having one touching the middle of the motherboard. Check all the holes line up properly. And sometimes it's better to put your power supply in first so you can run the cables under the motherboard and get it a lot tidier. Some cases have holes to go in the back and then they can pop up through the side like this one. Keeps everything in order. Right, let's get these screws dropped in. Don't forget to get all your screws finger tight before you button them up all the way and don't overdo them. Our original i5 4570. So remove your cover, open up your socket. Now these pins are very easy to bend so you have to be very careful you need to find your two slots here and you'll see on your socket there's the arrow this correlates with this arrow this way you don't get your direction wrong and the way I like to do it is I just line up the two notches place it in we have some problematic pins on this over here this is why this motherboard was so cheap i'm always getting pinned with these jobs just get some tweezers the nice little pointy sharp edge on them works perfect for bending them back into place you can see the angle they're supposed to be on you don't want them to touch the other pins it's almost like they know where they're meant to be much better let's try and drop our cpu in now just take your time and relax guy 
sitting much nicer. Now just pop it down like James Brown and you're all done, son. Clean your chip and cooler as I was putting on the thermal paste and about to chuck the heat sink on. That's when I realized that it had broken pins. It's at that moment he knew he fucked up. Never let minor setbacks mess you up. Just carry on. Jump on the auction site. I found a 12th gen brand new in the box stock cooler. Sure, a lot of YouTubers would say it won't fit. Not naming anyone, Linus. But with 12th gen, that's finally changed. Just stripped it all apart, got out the file, and spent an hour and a half filing it out. You might think that sounds like a whole lot of work, but I'll tell you what, it was well worth it when you see the temperatures at the end when we overclock this thing. It goes hard compared to the old school stock coolers. We're all filed out. Holes into slots. Pretty good. Put it back together definitely easier to put it back together they can only go one way pulling them apart you got to get a little fiddly screwdriver in under the clip do you think that's fantastic okay. beautiful oh what do you know it all located nicely so these are new school ones you just push them down I did have to use a lot of force to get them to click into place so I probably wouldn't oh, recommend right. putting older coolers Look onto that. newer chips as it might not Take sit low place. enough these clearly sit a bit low 12th gen cooler on a 4th gen i5 now I scored up 3 sticks of RAM for 10 euros 2 4 gig sticks and a 2 gig stick all rip jaws, 1600 megahertz. So we're not going to use the 2 gig stick because when you put a 2 gig stick with a larger stick it's going to default these down to the smaller size so you just end up with 3 2 gig sticks so you're better off with the 2 4 gig sticks. Don't be shy, ram it in there. Oh don't they match that cooler well? Now, graphics card. We need our SATA cables. Rewind a whole lot. I've left out all the other cabling. Sorry. Ah, so see how this has a slight snap. This is dangerous because that means you can put these plugs on backwards. You need the L. To really line up with the L which is snapped off so if you put that on backwards bang goodbye hard drive keep everything tidy as possible cable management is key here hide away our cables we don't need if no one can see the bird's nest does it even exist see how much length we have on this Pop it up through here. Give it the old reach around. And then pop it out of here. Beautiful. And 20 pin. If you're unsure of the orientation, look for the little clip. There'll be a little tab of plastic that it hooks in on and it will click. USB free. Get in. Audio. Audio, it says AAFP on the motherboard, USB. Get out your magnifying glass, it always says on the motherboard what each port is for. It's another power switch. Oh, there's our card reader, which is just another USB. You don't have to guess, they've written on the board where everything goes. Just make sure if you don't understand what it means to have a look in your motherboard manual. Everything's good. Okay. Right, so we're going to post this thing and it's going to error out because of that 12th gen fan. It's not going to be able to detect the zero RPM rate and it's going to kick up an error. CPU fan error. You can see that the CPU fan is running. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to set the BIOS to ignore this error. So yes, press F1, go into the BIOS, advanced mode, go into monitoring, and then down in here we have our Q fan control. Fan speed lower limit. Oh, ignore. Here we go. So clearly Intel didn't want you using these newer fans on older stuff, but I ain't one for following the rules. But good on you Linus for uh, letting people know mate. Oh lovely, we're only using up half of our GPU budget. We could easily run 10 year old games and still screen capture with this. Let's fire up some Skyrim. Oh yeah, it actually runs good as, even with the screen capturing going. Unbelievable. It's in the but my Thomas the Tank Engine mod didn't work at the start. Oh, he makes the train noises, but he's not a train. Oh, it looks like I picked the wrong mods. Can't be a tank engine dragon at the start of the game. That's okay, I'll show you a quick tip how to get your sneak up to 100 at the very start of the game and get your levels way up. Easy as. Shout out to little Nate who showed me this trick back in the day. The OG grinders would always sit there attacking their mate that won't fight back at the very start of the level and that way you get all your sneak up, your one handed, everything can get right up right at the start before you even start the game essentially and that way you'll get heaps of perks heaps of levels you'll be cranking it and it looks like my uh, game capturing mic was playing up a bit too so unfortunately i won't have too much gameplay Oh, lovely, our CPU's happy as. Hidden its maximum boost clocks, 3.6 gigahertz at 75% usage at 51 degrees maximum. That's nothing. Our cores are happy. Our motherboard temps are good. Our graphics card temps are good. Graphics card full utilization, 99%. Memory load was 81 and only 63% of memory usage. Let's overclock the CPU. Let's push it. See how much we can squeeze out of the old beast. We're going to use the Easy Tune Wizard to try and overclock it. Spoiler alert, it won't work. It will work for the RAM. So if we go gaming, media, editing. And we're just going to say we have a water cooler so we want it to do the most we'll try and get a bit more out of it but it won't increase the clocks but it will turn on xmp for the ram which is quite handy It'll make our ram a lot faster let's open some monitoring software so we're going to use hw info again to monitor our changes and see how it performs and then we're going to use CPU ID to stress the CPU and just see how much it can get out of it. 1.1 volts. Looks like it's stuck on a measly 3.4 gigahertz. No surprises there. The standard overclocking automatic thing doesn't work on a locked chip. Okay, so we can do a lot better than this. So let's show you a way that we can overclock it. Press your BIOS key. We're going to go to advance, we're going to go to AI tweaker. We're going to leave the RAM alone because it's done a good enough job. What we're going to do is we're going to set our base clock even higher. We're going to go 106. So we want to sync all cores. Okay, we want to set our CPU core voltage to manual. And we're hitting 1.1 volts before, so we want to give it a little bit more. We're going to go 1.2 volts. 
Now to get it to hold its boost clocks, go into advanced mode and go into your boost performance mode and set it turbo performance. That's what we want. Uh, exit, save and reset. Look at that, that's amazing. It's running a solid 3.8 gigahertz now. That's the same as the next class chip up from this. And it's doing well on 1.2 volts, no worries. I even stress test it for 10 minutes and the hottest it got was 66 degrees and then I ran user benchmark sorry I'm not doing my aim I've got more important things to do so obviously our gaming's very low and our workstation's low this is because of our graphics everything else is in the green but we're in the red for graphics so let's have a look at our CPU results oh look at this performing way above expected we're in the hundredth percentile best in the world can't complain about that can we on a stock cooler what are the chances how does the rest of it stack up so our graphics is about normal a little bit under average well ssd our free ssd is cranking 87th percentile our old HDDs, not too bad either. Oh, our RAM is really pumping. See that? We've got an extra 96 megahertz. That's because we've increased our base clock frequency. And that doesn't just affect the CPU when you do that. It affects the bus, the RAM, everything comes up. Let's play some games and just stability test it. I'm going to play some Far Cry 3 Blood Dragon. What's cooler than killing dragons in Skyrim? Killing dragons that have lasers. This has to be one of the greatest DLCs for a game ever. So much fun. It's a shame they didn't make it a standalone game. But oh well, what do you do? I managed to play it for hours and the computer never crashed. It's stable as anything. Temperatures were fine. It ran really well. And can't really complain with this computer at all but the graphics could be better as it's only a one gig card we can't really play any modern games so what i'm going to do is i've ordered up a graphics card from aliexpress the cheapest x crypto mining factory refurbished thing i could find this thing was uh, rx 580 apparently seems legit it's got good reviews and I want to see if it can actually still play games or if it's just a scam. And basically I want to see if we can upgrade this machine for under a hundred bucks to make it be able to play modern games. So stay tuned for the next video. I'm just waiting for the power supply to arrive. Thanks for watching everyone. Please like and subscribe and I'll see you all on the next one. Take care.